Hello and welcome to Skyria.com. My name is Dr. Heather Ali. With Skyria.com, you can enjoy thousands of lectures anywhere and anytime. Today, we are going to talk about another very important and interesting topic that is shortness of breath in adults part two. We did talk about uh, some how to approach a patient, uh, how to approach a patient with shortness of breath in part one. In this part, we'll talk about some of the diseases and some of the causative factors that can that can present with shortness of breath in emergency department. Let's go to the timeline. First, we'll talk about what are the causes, uh, what are the various causes which, uh, which present with shortness of breath, what are the respiratory causes, then we'll talk about what are the cardiac causes that present with respiratory compromise or respiratory compromise symptoms, what are the neurological causes what that might present with uh, shortness of breath and uh, other symptoms of respiratory compromise. We'll then talk about the other causes, which includes emboli, pulmonary hypertension, uh, venous occlusive diseases, vasculitis, and other diseases which can cause respiratory compromise or sign and symptoms of respiratory compromise. We'll talk about, we'll emphasize on the general treatment principle in patients with, uh, with uh, acute respiratory compromise. And this general principle implies to all of the patients presenting with shortness of breath, irrespective of what might be the cause of shortness of breath. The emphasis on the first two steps would be given under this section that what should be done, what, would be the, what should be the first two steps to be done in patients when you receive an emergency with shortness of breath. We'll then talk about the general treatment principles of acute exacerbation of asthma. What are the signs and symptoms that a patient might present to you with acute exacerbation of asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases? What are the treatment remedies you can offer to a patient in emergency department? And what should be considered in patients with life-threatening or impending uh, respiratory failure, especially in patients with acute exacerbation of COPD and asthma? Moving on, to, we'll talk about pneumonia. We'll, talk, we'll touch and go about what, is the, what are the what are the uh, what are the importance of antibiotics in patients with pneumonia, and how would a patient present to you in pneumonia? Then we'll talk about the series of a mnemonic uh, that is used uh, in uh, congestive heart failure. That's easy for you to remember and easy for you to uh, uh, to learn by heart and that can help you uh, identify and treat congestive heart failure. The pattern or order is not the way it should be, but the, the mnemonic is very, very helpful to remember, to memorize what is the treatment plan for congestive heart failure. Again, the, the mnemonic continues. We'll talk about, again, the, the third mnemonic, uh, that is LMNOP of congestive heart failure. We'll then talk about uh, the management of central airway obstruction the series of the flow chart that should be taken into, into, into consideration while treating the patients with certain central airway obstruction. Uh, special patients will be discussed in details, especially elderly, and also will be uh, emphasized on pregnant females that might present with shortness of breath. With Ascaria.com, you can enjoy thousands of lectures at home and anywhere, at, at home and anywhere. You can enjoy more lectures in emergency medicine at Iscaria.com. You can also enjoy medical lectures on basic medical sciences and uh, medic medicine and surgery on Iscaria.com. You can enjoy your, your free trial today. Start your free trial today. Thank you for watching Iscaria.com.